everyone. Welcome to this demo on how to combine images. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper on how to combine multiple images and use new techniques like clipping mask. So let me zoom out so you can see what we're going to be working with. I have this image right here of a beach and what we're going to incorporate is an image of a rock that I have right here and also an image of a monkey. I know crazy, right? So there's going to be a lot of things. So make sure that you take notes so that way you don't have to watch the video because it will be a little bit long because we're trying new techniques and I have to go a little bit slow. Um, so make sure that you take notes so that way you don't have to rewatch everything. OK, so make sure that you do that. I'm going to first start with this rock and making a selection of the rock so we can incorporate it into the beach image. OK, so the first thing I'm going to go over is some things that you guys know already, which is using the pen tool but I think it's really important that you guys practice how to use that. And in this case, in this image, I think the pen tool will be useful because if you try to use one of the automatic tools like the quick select tool or the magnetic lasso tool or something like that, um, you will encounter some problems because on the bottom of the rock, it's very dark and it's hard for the tool to identify how to do it. So it's better that you do it manually. So that way you can kind of see where it should go. So that way it doesn't go all the way too deep, you know, here or it selects it a little bit too high. OK, so that's why we're going to do it with the pen tool besides, you know, the idea of practicing. So to start, I'm going to again duplicate my background. I'm going to do command J. So I duplicate the background. So I have one layer that I'm going to be working with. You should get in the habit of doing that. So that way, in case you paint by accident, you know, on top of your image or something like that, it's on that image that's above and not the original one. OK, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pull the path panel out so that way you guys can see it. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it right there. But I'm going to make a new work path. I'm going to click here and do new path right in the option right here. And I'm going to title it rock. OK, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to title it rock and then press OK. So once I have that, I'm going to select my pen tool by selecting P on the keyboard. So I have my pen tool. Make sure that is the tool that you really want. Um, if you notice right here is the one that looks like a fountain pen and it should be the first option in that tool right there. OK, so we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Um, and it's not going to be as precise because I want to make sure that I can do the video a little bit quicker so I don't have you guys here for a whole hour. So I'm going to try to rush it. So don't judge my Photoshop skills. Um, one of the things that I recommend when you're selecting something like this is you want to be very zoomed in. OK, you want to be something like that so you can really see what you're doing. OK, right now that's like, you know, pretty zoomed in um, the least. You know, at least right now, you know, you should be doing at 300, 400 or more. So somewhere around there. So that way you can really see what you're doing. Because this is a lab, I'm going to try to do it a little bit further away. So that way, you know, I can go faster. So it's not going to be precise, but it should basically give you an idea of how you need to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the pen tool and I'm going to start my um, selection right here. I'm going to click here. I did it on purpose a little bit in and I'm going to move it with my arrow keys so it's a little bit inside remember every time you do a selection like this you want to be a little bit inside your subject if you do it right at the line you're going to grab some of that sky and then you're going to end up with a white halo around it or blue in this case because the sky is kind of blue around it so that's why you want to get rid of that line you actually want to go a little bit in because when you do the selection it grabs a little bit from the right side and a little bit from the left from whatever line you do so if I do it in the inside then it will grab a little bit of the rock and it's going to be okay it's going to look fine but if you do it right on the line then it's going to grab some of that sky so that's why we want to do it a little bit in okay and I might do it a little bit more in now because I'm going quicker but I'm going to basically start clicking around and going, you know, fast around here. So you guys can see how I would do it. Now, if you notice, I'm clicking and dragging so I can do curves so the movements are not sharp, right? Because this rock is not like a geometric shape, right? So it should be organic. So I'm going, you know, little by little doing little curves. And as you can see, every time I drag, I'm pointing, you know, the curve to where I'm going. OK, so if I'm going up, I point up when I drag. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect right now because this is just a demo but I want you guys to get the idea of what I would do for example I'm not doing this little point I'm actually skipping that because I want to go quicker um, but when you guys go in you want to make sure that you do a good selection the reality is that people won't know how the original rock is so you can kind of like you know play a little bit around the edge even if you miss something nobody will notice um, that you missed it but you want to be you know as close to the original one as you can because sometimes if you don't follow it it will be a little bit noticeable and then you don't want that okay and again I'm going a little bit inside the rock and I'm trying to match as much as I can the shape of it and I if I was gonna do this I would definitely go a little bit um, more zoomed in right now I'm like way too zoomed in I'm missing all this stuff but I don't I don't mind that right now for this demo and this is the part that it gets tricky okay and the reason is because right now it goes really black like dark you know so in this case I actually am gonna go a little bit higher here I'm gonna lose that little bit so I can skip that and here is like where your brain has to kind of imagine right where where the rock is following I am looking at this and I'm looking that I'm actually a little bit too above and this is a good moment to teach you guys how to move these points even after you do them if you press command it changes to this tool and you can pull this down and you can basically do the same with all of them you can basically and I'm holding the command down I just I didn't just tab it I, I'm literally holding it with my left hand the command and then reposition this how I want it and once you're done and you can let go the the command and it will go back to the pen tool and I can click here and then read you know to activate my path so I can keep going and then I'm gonna go up here now if I would have been zoom in then you're able to do way more precise work than what I'm doing right now um, since I'm not you know you guys are not grading me right I hope not um, nobody's gonna see this this is just to practice so it doesn't matter if it's perfect now the last one actually this one I feel like I did it wrong so I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna move it a little bit more to the right so the last point makes more sense there we go alright so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what I just did I just went around my rock usually I have way more dots than these ones particularly when uh, something that has like texture like this I'll add more so I can follow the texture but I went a lot quicker now and now that I have this and I have my rock you will see here that under the path window um, I can see that shape on white okay so that's my path right there now we have to convert this to a selection so I'm gonna go to the menu click right here and then I'm gonna go down to make selection so you guys have done this before okay so now the same you know idea will fall in here you have to put some feather I'm gonna put one for now see if that works one of the cool things about you know using the pen tool is even if I deselect it or whatever and I save the document you know as a PSD and I come back tomorrow um, I can basically you know reopen the path and then go like you know what I actually want to change this feather and you don't have to redo the whole selection so that's one of the benefits of using the pen tool okay versus one of the other selections if you do the other selections and then you select your rock and then you realize that you did the feather wrong then you have to go back to the beginning and redo the selection here because we saved that as a path I could just click on it it reactivates that you know path and I can go here make selection and then pick a different feather if I want and then I press OK and then reactivates it so it saves you you know a lot of time in the long run maybe at the beginning it's a little bit slower to actually go around it and do it yourself instead of using a smart tool um, but two things will happen you know you're smarter than the computer and you might be able to identify better if it's doing a good job or not by doing it yourself and then second you have the backup of redoing it later if you fe re feel that the feather didn't work well and you don't have to redo it so that will save you you know twice the time so just keep that in mind even though that is a little bit harder to use at first uh, it will save you time at the end okay so now that I have this now I can add the mask to this rock layer so I'm gonna go ahead and add the mask now I have the mask if I hide this one you'll see that I have the rock alone so now I can select my move tool okay I'm gonna drag it all the way up to the beach image I wait until 
this image comes and then I drag it down and then I let go. This message is coming up because they're, you know, different sources. One of them is from online and the other one is a photograph. So it has different workspaces, but don't worry, just press OK. And here we have our rock. Now, the next thing is where are you going to position this rock? I'm going to leave it up to you, but on, on my demo, I'm going to put it somewhere around here because it's kind of like the only area really unless you put it on here on the top rock or something like that. But I want you guys to maybe put it here so that way we can do some of the other fun stuff. Now, there are a couple of things that you will notice. The first is the rock is too big, so I'm going to do Command-T, and then I'm going to scale it down a little bit so it can fit inside this area. So I'm going to put it somewhere there. I'm going to rotate it by going to the outside of the edge on the corner so you can see that arrow bend it. And I'm going to click and drag it so I wait, it can be a little bit that way. Now, one thing I'm noticing is this guy is on the left, right? And if you see this big rock here, the left side is the one that has the lightest part. And then this side is more on the sh shade. Okay, so in this rock, it's the opposite. Right now, this the light is coming from the right, not from the left. So I need to flip this image. So to do that, you're going to right, right click on inside here. You're going to right click inside and then you're going to see one at the bottom that says flip horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now it's matching more that location. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that. Now I have my rock here. Now there's something else that's happening. Okay. The rock is reddish kind of color. Okay. Um, the colors do not match this location or the lightness or brightness of the rock. So I need to change the brightness and change the color. So to do that, I'm going to go to my curves, select the curves. And if I try to darken it, you will see that it darkens everything. Okay. Because the adjustment layer is on top of both of the images. So it affects everything that's underneath. So this is where we're going to learn something new and it's called clipping mask. And this basically, creates a clipping so that way this layer of the adjustment is only affecting the one right underneath okay because right now it's affecting everything that's underneath so we want to make sure that it affects only the rock so let me show you how to do that one way is if you press option in your keyboard while you click on the curves right here option and I click there this menu comes up and there is one checkbox right here that says use previous layer to create clipping mask. So once you see that, if you click on it and press OK, you will see that that layer adjustment that we just did had this little arrow that shows you, you know, this layer is only affecting this one. So now if I go here, I can basically darken only that layer. OK, so that's really useful. This is something that you definitely need to learn because you will use it later. OK, so. That's that. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you another way. Let's say, assume that you clicked on this and you started doing it and you're like, oh, it's affecting everything. It's, you don't have to delete it and restart over. You can press option in your keyboard and hover in between the two layers until you see this icon and then you just click and basically it does the same thing. Okay. So that's your clipping mask. Now we have to basically adjust the image so that way it looks similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically adjust this. So it's a little bit darker. I'm going to lower a little bit there and I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm actually going to take away some of that red and let's go, let's see if blue and then we add more yellow also. Let's see if that works a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the green and let's see if I can play around with this. Oh, that's a little bit better. Now let's go back to the red so I can make it a tad warmer. Okay. That looks sort of okay. Now I have to go back to RGB. Maybe I can make it a little bit darker. Let's do this. There we go. Oh, not too much. Somewhere around there. So let's see the before and after. So that's how it was before. <laughs> Look at how fake that looks. Now with what we did, it blends in a little bit. It's not perfect because I did it kind of quickly, but you can fine tune those colors to make it look perfect and the contrast. So at least now it looks like, okay, it's close enough. You know, it could maybe be there, um, but we still have to fine tune it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the rock. 
I'm going to transform it, rotate it a little bit. Okay, try to make it look more realistic. Now it's missing something, okay? And it's very important that's the shadow underneath of the rock, okay? Even though it's an overcast day, it's not the best example, but we need some kind of shadow underneath this rock so we can basically make it look like it's sitting there, okay? The same would be if you're doing a person, right? And they're standing there, you will need a shadow underneath so that way it looks like they're standing there. If not, it's gonna look just like they pasted there. So to do that, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. Um, the first thing is I have this image right here. I'm gonna hide the layer mass. The entire image is still there, right? The mass is just hiding the background. Okay, so enable layer mask. But this mask has the rock, okay? Only the rock. So I'm gonna press command and I'm gonna click on the mask. Okay, and it's going to reactivate that mask, which, which basically is only the rock, that selection that we did initially. So now I'm going to click on the background layer and I'm going to add a new blank layer on top of it. So this one right here. Okay, that one is empty right now. So I have a selection and I have the layer that's empty selected. Okay, those two things have to be selected at the same time, the, the rock and a new blank layer underneath that one. And now I'm going to press shift delete okay that is going to open this window that is the shortcut for fill okay if you want to find it it's under edit okay and then fill right here okay but um, the shortcut works a lot better because it's quicker to get so shift delete you get this window okay and you have to make sure that you put on the contents black because we're going to make it a shadow and shadows are usually dark right so we're going to fill it with black i'm going to press ok now, don't get panicked. You're not going to see any changes. And, you know, a lot of people go like, well, wh where is it? Where is it? Okay, just follow me real quick. Do Command D to deselect it. Okay, and now if I hide the rock that's on top, then you will see the black blob, okay, that we just created. So that one is covering it. And the reason is because you want your shadow underneath, you know, the person or the rock in this case. So now I can, you know, I'm going to put this rock here so you can see what we're going to do or the shadow of the rock. Now that I have that, there's two qualities of shadows. Usually they're soft and they have, you know, translucency so you can actually see the floor also underneath the shadow. So we need to do those two things. So first, let's make this um, blob a little bit softer. So I'm going to go to filter, blur. So write that down, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Okay, so filter, blur, gosh and blur okay so once you do that then you want to look at the surrounding area to see how the shadows are in this case it's really overcast so they should be really soft okay it's not going to be like super you know noticeable like if it was in the sun um, so this one is kind of tricky because the image itself it doesn't have qualities that will be easy repli you know mimic so like a shadow of a you know the sun in the floor you can really see the edge of it and this one is very soft so i'm going to put it kind of soft like this i'm going to press ok maybe i overdid it a little bit but i just want you guys to be able to see it and i'm going to put it here underneath the rock and there's two things i need to do still one of them is kind of like squish or squash the shadow so i'm going to do command t i'm going to hold option in my keyboard uh, sorry not option shift so you're going to hold shift so that way you can distort your image and basically you're going to make it now it looks like the rock is floating it's just kind of funny um so that's basically what you want to do you're kind of like squishing it because if the sun is coming from above the shadow should be underneath and it should be kind of flattened like that not with the original shape of the rock so that's why we're doing the this step of basically copying the rock right so we, because shadows come from the original object or person so it should have the same shape or form but then depending on where the light is it will get distorted so that's what i'm doing this you know bringing it down like this now the other thing that we have to do after you approve that let's assume that you like it like that and then it's like the levitating rock that's going to be our, our cool project the levitation okay so now after we do that we have to make sure that we lower the opacity so it looks more realistic because you should be able to see through a shadow okay um, you don't like just see a black blob. You basically have some softness that you can see. Now you can put it underneath the rock. So it looks like the rock is causing the shadow like that. You know, so it looks like it's sitting down. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it there for now. It's not perfect, but at least it gives you an idea. I think it actually looks more cool as a levitating, you know, levitating rock. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring a monkey now. Okay, now things are going to get more interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection of this monkey so we can put it sitting on top of the rock and he's going to be levitating the rock. So what we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. Okay, and I'm going to introduce you again to the quick select tool that we have used. Okay, so if you forgot which one is the quick select tool, it's this one right here. Looks like a brush. Okay, you can press W and it will select it if it has the magic wand okay by default make sure that you click it and you select a quick selection tool okay so now that we go here you're going to use the quick select tool go around your subject like that and basically select the monkey i'm, I'm going to do this kind of quickly because i don't want you guys to wait for me here forever um, there's one mistake here at the bottom so I'm going to hold down option as I showed you before and unselect that okay now I need the feet here okay now there is a problem because right now I also need to deselect this area so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller I'm gonna hold option and subtract this area right here because that shouldn't be part of it let's see if I can Okay, perfect, perfect. There we go. Oh, actually, that's actually good. That's where the leg ends. Okay, so it seems like it's sort of okay. Um, I'm going to leave the hair how it is because I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out, and that's our selection. It's not perfect, but we're going to make it perfect. I'm going to add the mask by clicking on the mask icon. So now if I hide this, we have our monkey, which it doesn't look good, okay? But... I'm going to show you a really cool trick. Um, if you double click on the mask, this panel will open. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is under view mode on the top right here. I'm going to highlight this because there's a lot of little steps. Under view mode, you're going to see view and you're going to see a little thumbnail. From this menu, make sure that you have the one that says on black. Okay. It might not look black right away because maybe the opacity is lower. So it might look like this. Okay, which is fine. You just move the slider all the way to the top. The reason is if it's on black, it will be easier to see the imperfections. Okay, so that way you can really see what you need to fix. Okay, after you do that, you're going to click Smart Radius right here on this Add Detection Smart Radius. Okay, and after you do that, you're going to select the second tool from the toolbar on the left. You can see that we're basically inside this mode that changed everything right we don't see all the panels of Photoshop right now so you want to go to this one that says refine edge brush tool it looks like a little hair and then a brush okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint with this tool around the monkey so let me take the highlight off and you want a tool that is basically about the size or the width of the you know of what the, you think the hair is gonna be going outside of the monkey so I'm gonna keep it kinda of small like this and what you're going to do is you're going to start painting around the edge. And you can see that this basically identifies where the hair is. So this is where I didn't do it. And then look at the hair here. So it's a pretty cool tool. It works great. You just have to be a little bit patient. I'm going to go quickly because I don't want to be here forever. So you go around. It basically identifies, you know, where the hair is. This part, I'm not going to do it because that's going to be in the rock. So it doesn't really matter. Now, if you do a mistake or you see something that's not working like this, you can press, oop, I hit the wrong key. You can press option and then you can subtract it again, okay? So similar to when you're doing a selection with the quick select tool. So by default, it's adding, you know, um, and then if you press option, it will subtract. Now this part, well, let's just do it just in case. You see this part is not gonna work that well because that was in, on top of something. So it doesn't have anything to grab the hair. So I'm going to leave that where it is. And then here, I'm going to start doing it again. What we want is just to make it look like it's, oh, this one didn't work that well. So let's do option and try to see if we can make it a little bit closer to the edge. There we go. It's looking a little bit better. And remember, here is going to look a lot worse than what it's going to look in the photograph because we have it on black right now. So every all the little imperfections are going to stand out way more now 
when we go to the, the final image, you'll basically see that it looks a lot better than this. Okay. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger so we can get some more of that hair. Now, I when I used to start, you know, Photoshop, I used to have to paint each of the little hairs because there was no smart tool. So you guys are lucky that you have this awesome tool that does a pretty decent job. You know, this this air right here is not doing it that great. Um, but you can, you know, you can basically kind of like see that when it's on a white, it will look better than what it looks right now. The ear, I don't think I need the ear, but let's see just in case. It's a little bit of hair there. Okay. And then I'm going to go around here. Okay. So that's our monkey selected. It looks a lot better. Now, the only thing that you have to do is just press OK. And basically it applies that. So now we have the monkey with a decent mask. I'm going to grab the move tool. I'm going to drag him to the beach image, bring it down, and then put it right here. So right now, I have the monkey on the rock. I can make him smaller, Command T, and shrink him a little bit so it looks more realistic. Okay, and I'm probably am gonna put it here so that way I don't see that bottom part where it's kind of choppy. So the other thing I have to do is basically fix the color, you know, and um, make sure that the image looks good. So I'm gonna press Command, sorry, Option, and then click on the curve so I can do another clipping mask only for the monkey. So now this one is affecting the monkey and I can play around with the light and the brightness. That way it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay. So that's sort of what you guys have to do. Okay. I'm going to give you this lab. Um, you know, on mine, I put the rock like levitating. I thought it was more funny than putting the shadow here, but you can, you know, do it like that. Okay. And that looks more realistic. Like the rock is sitting there. Um, and the same thing you can do with the monkey it feels like the monkey is being lit by the right side. So it might be better if we flip him by doing command T and then flip him or horizontally. Now it looks like the light is coming from that area. So I can put him like this and it looks a little bit better. Um, I actually like more the other position, but in terms of lighting, it seems like this will be the right move to do. Um, anyway, that's basically what you guys have to do for this lab. So, be patient. You have to take your time doing it. Don't rush it. Take good notes when you watch the video because you will need it. Okay. You have to use the pen tool to select the rock. Remember to put some feather. Okay. Then you bring that rock to the image. Then you have to add, you know, the transformation. So that way you can make it smaller and fit it and flip it horizontally. Okay. By right clicking inside of the rock when you have the transformation. Then you have to add the clipping mask so you can change the color of the rocks to match that scenario, okay, and the uh, brightness. And then after that, then you go ahead and get the monkey, and then you have to do the selection and just do what I just did, okay? Now, this is just the beginning of, like, combining images. Once you guys master this, you can basically do whatever you imagine. It's like being a painter, right? Whatever you imagine in your head, you can basically build by combining images and creating this kind of um, composite. So you guys will have to do a composite later on for your projects. So make sure that you learn how to do it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be around and I think I covered everything. So I'll be excited to see how you guys create this one because now we're really diving in to more complex, you know, composite and combinations in Photoshop. So I hope that you guys have fun with this one and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.